Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I'm going to let you in on Motion's best kept secret. Now, I've used this in a lot of my tutorials, but I think it's a technique that a lot of people probably don't know about. So let's take a closer look. So let's start with some stuff that I'm sure you already know. So I've got a circle here. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, come to Object and Replicate. I'm just going to switch it to Circle. As you can see, we've got a pretty pattern that we can have loads of fun with, and I'm sure you've experimented with this with stills. But what we can also do is feed the Replicator with video, and this is the really important thing to understand. So I've got this video here of this kid doing whatever it is he's doing, and I'm going to feed it into the Replicator instead of that circle. I'm just going to rename this here as cell because it's confusing otherwise. So this is the particle cell. You'll notice here's our Replicator controls. If I click on this cell, it brings up the cell controls. So instead of this circle, I'm going to use my video as the source. And if we come over to our Replicator, you'll see we've now got what we didn't have before. We've got these playback controls, and these are what is going to be really useful and interesting for us. So I'm just going to switch to rectangle. So I'm going to go with a width of 1650 and a height, I think, of 940. This source video is 1920 1080, if you're wondering. And I'm going to go for eight rows and eight columns. And I'm going to come down here to the scale, this one here, and set that to 12. And now you'll see, turn off the background video there, that we've got that same video replicated in each of those squares. And that's kind of quite fun. But this is where it gets interesting. We've got these playback controls. Obviously, we can turn off play frames, and we're just now getting the first frame. Turn those back on again. We can hit random frames. And you'll see that each one of those has a random start time. Now, I'm not going to be able to get this to play because buffering a random start for each of these is pretty taxing. So I'm just going to turn that off. So what I'm actually going to do instead is play with the really interesting control, and that's source frame offset, this one down here. And I'm going to set a source frame offset of four frames. And now you'll see that they're kind of all set it, offset in a very smooth fashion. They're actually offset from the center, as you can probably see there. If you look back at the start there, they all kind of converge out from the center. And that's because of the replicator's origin here at the top. That's set to center by default. But if we set it to upper left, we get this really nice effect of those kind of in sequence frame by frame and row by row, and they're all offset. It's a really, really nice effect, I think. I just want to point out that we can actually do something that we couldn't actually do with the random start frames. If we actually wanted to kind of randomize this, we can do it in a much more sophisticated way just by hitting this shuffle order button. You can see that those are in a different order, but because it's not actually having to buffer different start frames, it's actually looking pretty cool, and we can change that shuffle just by clicking on that replicator seed there. So that would be the way to do it if you wanted to kind of mix them up. I think that's quite a nice trick. So anyway, this is video, and that's why we get these controls. If you feed the replicator video, these controls pop up. If we change it, so let's come back to the replicator cell, this thing here, feed it the circle again, just to confirm that those controls go away. But what if we wanted to use this circle? I'm just going to set that scale back up to 100%. We wanted to use this circle, but we wanted the circle to be animated. So I'm just going to add a little bit of an animation to this circle by coming to Behaviors, Shape, and Right On. And I'm going to come to, I don't know, five seconds roughly, and hit O on the keyboard to shorten that Right On down. And also going to have uh, Draw in Arrays, I think. So now you'll see that those are all animated, but the start point is all the same. So what if we wanted a different start point, like we were getting with that source video? You can see, again, we don't have those playback controls here. Well, the secret to this, and the secret to this whole tutorial, is that in order to get this effect to work, what we need to do is make a clone of the animated source. So right-click on the circle there, Make Clone Layer. 
There's the clone. There's our cell. Let's drag the clone into the cell. And you can immediately see how that changed there. They're now animating with an offset because we look, up, look back at our replicator. We've got our controls back and that source frame offset is giving us what we want. So I'm going to set that to maybe 12 so you can see a bit better how this is going. Just going to quickly change up this color here. I'm going to choose pick from color range, funk up these colors a little bit, make it a bit more interesting. So th this is the secret. If you want to be able to feed the replicator an animated layer that is not video, then you have to make a clone of it. So the other thing I want to point out is this is going to actually work with emitters as well. So I'm just going to turn off my replicator. I'm going to come back to my circle, not the clone, because I want to show you how the, the difference again. So if we select the circle and we come to object and make particles, I'm going to switch this to line very quickly and then set up the line. And you'll see they've all got exactly the same start time and we don't want that. And again, we haven't got any controls over the timing here because uh, emitters don't have timing controls. Uh, but what we can do again is we can use our clone as the source. So our clone is here. Our emitter cell is here. Let's rename that as cell. And let's take our clone and drop it into the cell. And you can immediately see the difference that those are now offset in time. And it's looking much more interesting. Just to stop all that bouncing around, I'm just going to set up some opacity keyframes there so they fade in and out like that. So it's that's kind of pretty cool. What we could also do is we could come to behaviors and particles and scale over life. Let's have a start scale of maybe 20 or something. And this is a really nice fancy animation that we've got because we're using that animated circle cell. So the final trick that I want to show you is so far, we've only been using a single layer, but I'm just going to quickly set up a more complicated setup. So here you'll see I've made a new group and I've put my original animated circle into it. And I've also added a couple of rectangles doing their own different animation. So if we come back to the replicator, let's turn that back on again. And we wanted to use this group as the source. So let's do that. Let's come to the replicator cell there. Let's take our group and drop it in to the source well there. You can see that these are all the same, which is kind of fun in its own way. But what if we wanted them offset? So the answer is the same thing again. We need to clone this group. So right click, make clone layer. And now we can use this new clone to drive the cell. So drop that into the cell there and you can see the difference that's made. We've now got this much more intriguing animation because we've got that offset on the replicator there. And here for fun, I've just switched up the replicator to be a wave and given it a little bit of amplitude. And this is kind of really looking pretty nice, I think. And it's all down to this fact that if we use a clone as the source, we can replicate any animation of our choosing and it doesn't just have to be video. So that is Motion's best kept secret. A lot of people don't, I think, know about this and think you can just drop a group or a shape directly into the replicator and get this result. But you have to use a clone because what the clone does is effectively turns the layer or the group into a piece of video as far as the replicator and, of course, the emitter is concerned. Let's just have a look at our emitter and use that clone for that source there. It's pretty wild, but the same thing applies. So there you go, that's Motion's best kept secret. And I can't tell you how useful this is. The creative possibilities are literally limitless. So I hope that's been interesting. Thanks very much indeed for watching and I'll see you again soon.